Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sarial, Professor, Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the male external genital system. So this is supine cadaver. I'm standing on the right side. The camera person is on the right side. So this is the main external genitalia. So let's take a look at the parts of it. This is the place where my finger is located. This is the angle where the root of the penis begins. This is the shaft of the penis. This is the corona glandis. This is the glands of the penis. And on the tip of it, we can see the external urethral meatus where we are putting this instrument. And we can feel the instrument here, which I shall describe just now. So, what are the parts of the penis? On the dorsal aspect, we have two structures, which are referred to as the opera cavernosa. And on the ventral aspect, we have another structure, which is referred to as the corpus spongiosum. These three structures together constitute the shaft of the penis. So, let's trace it right from the root. I'm going to lift it up now. So, we can see this bulbous structure here, which I'm touching with my finger. This is the bulb of the penis. This is one component of the root of the penis. Other component of the root of the penis is here, where my finger is tracing on this side, and similarly on this side, where my finger is tracing. These two are the crura of the penis, which are composed of the corpora cavernosa. Bulb of the penis is composed of the corpus spongiosum, and the three structures of the root, they unite to form the shaft of the penis. Okay, now let's take a look at the layers of the penis. First, of course, we have dissected out the skin, and this is the skin that you can see, we have reflected it. Under the skin, we have this tissue here. This is the superficial fascia. In this region, it is called the tartos fascia. Then we have the next layer of tissue, which I have lifted up here. This is called the bux fascia. This is the deep fascia of the penis. And attached to this bux fascia was the suspensory ligament of the penis, which is here. This is a remnant of the suspensory ligament of the penis. Let's go a little deeper into this bux fascia, the deep fascia. Just under the bux fascia or the deep fascia, we have some important neurovascular structures. And I would like you to pay very close attention. These are the proximal ends of the neurovascular structures. These are the distal ends of the neurovascular structures. So let's take a look at them closely. First of all, we can see this big vein here in the middle. This is the dorsal vein of penis. This is a very important vein. It's located just under the bux fascia. And this dorsal vein of penis we can see it is a very big vein and this drains the blood. It, it is the only important structure which does not go through the perineal membrane. Instead, it goes anterior and superior to the perineal membrane and it enters into the pelvis and it drains into the prostatic venous plexus. This vein drains the venous blood during flaccidity of the penis after erection. On the other side, we can see this is the dorsal vein of penis, the deep dorsal vein of penis, and we can see the cut margin here. This is the deep dorsal vein of penis. Next, on either side of the deep dorsal vein of penis, we have got these structures here. These are the arteries, the arteries of the penis. And finally, further laterally, we have got these two big nerves. These are the nerves of the penis. So basically, on the dorsal aspect, we have three sets of structures. The deep dorsal vein of penis, the artery of the penis, and the nerves of the penis. One either side and either side. The same thing we can see here also. The deep dorsal vein of penis, on either side we can see the artery of the penis, and further laterally we can see the nerve of the penis. Now we shall reflect this aside and we will show some other structures. We have cut open the dorsal aspect of the penis and we can see this structure here and the other cut end is here. Let's take a look at what we notice. We notice a tough white sheet with a septum in between. This is known as the tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea is a very tough structure and this is the one which is mainly responsible for maintaining, for sustaining the erection. This is the septum. So therefore, these two structures which are enclosed by the tunica albuginea, these are known as corpora cavernosa. This is the one which I mentioned earlier. And if you notice, when I squeeze, we can see blood is coming out. Because these spaces are filled with blood-filled spaces. And if you look very carefully, in the middle, there will be one major artery and one major artery. That is known as the deep artery of the penis. So how does this work? Blood flows through the deep artery of the penis, which is a branch of the internal pudendal artery 
and then it gives multiple small branches here which are known as helicine arteries because they are highly coiled like helix. Under the influence of nitric oxide, these helicine arteries, they become uncoiled and they release blood into the cavernous spaces and that's what produces the erection. According to the simple law of mechanics and physics, when there is increase in the blood flow, this tunica albuginea, it prevents much expansion on the lateral aspect, instead it increases the length of the penis and that's how erection occurs. And when it, has, it is time to undergo flaccidity, the blood is drained by means of venous channels through this deep dorsal vein of penis which then drains into the prostatic venous plexus. So this is how it works and it is mediated by special nerves which are known as cavernous nerves. Cavernous nerves are non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic nerves which release nitric oxide which is responsible for erection of the penis. So this is about the corpora cavernosa. Now let's take a look at the corpus spongiosum. The corpus spongiosum, it starts as the bulb of the penis and it is attached to the outer surface of the perineal membrane in the superficial perineal pouch where my hand is located. This bulb of the penis then continues and it becomes the corpus spongiosum. It's composed of the same tissue and in the region of the bulb, it is enclosed by a muscle called the bulbospongiosus muscle. This corpus spongiosum, it is outside the tunica albuginea for obvious reasons because we don't want the corpus spongiosum to be compressed by the tunica albuginea. However, the corpus spongiosum and the corpora cavernosa, they are both enclosed by this bux fascia. And we can see the bux fascia is here and the bux fascia is on this side also. This corpus spongiosum is the one which contains the urethra. And that is what I showed you in the beginning. The instrument has gone through the urethral meatus and we can feel the urethra here. And this same corpus spongiosum, as it reaches the coronal glandus, it expands to form the glands of the penis. This particular cadaver is circumcised, so therefore we cannot see the prepuce. And from the glands of the penis in the tip is the external urethromeatus. So this is about the structure of the penis. To mention a few clinical correlations. In certain parts of the world, penile cancer is not very uncommon. And then what we have to do what is known as either partial amputation of the penis or a complete total amputation. What I have shown you is basically something similar to partial amputation of the penis. And if it's a total amputation, then we have to remove the complete, the crude of the penis, the bulb of the penis, and we have to do a perineal urethrostomy. This crude of the penis is enclosed by yet another different muscle, which is called ischiocavernosus. Those also have to be removed if we want to do a total penile excision. Inflammation of the glands is called balanitis. And usually it is accompanied by inflammation of the prepuce, then it is known as balanoposthitis. There are many causes of that. And all of you already know about circumcision, which is excision of the prepuce. If the prepucial orifice becomes very tight, then it is known as phimosis. And if it is partially loose and partially tight, and when we retract it, it gets stuck here, that is known as paraphimosis. These are some of the points which I wanted to mention to you about the penis, its structure, its coverings, its blood supply, and the mechanism of the male sexual erection. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Sherwin Weeks is the camera person. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the section below. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe.